Mr. Bob Zaney, everybody. Yeah. Bob Unexpected, thank you. And if I can live up to half of that, I'm gonna give it a shot. Thank you. Hey, give it up for Ken and Jim, huh? Give them a nice round of applause. Huh? Also, give it up for Jimmy Burns, huh, Jimmy, huh? Give him a nice round. He will be on the podcast of Bob Zini's show. Uh, you can find it on iTunes, and I think he's probably one of the best homosexual comedians in the business today. <laughs> He may not need that gay hook anymore. <laughs> God, I'm excited to be here. If you start out in this business, there's naysayers. Well, Bob, you'll never perform in a back alley in Pasadena. Well, <laughs> I've arrived, baby. If everything goes where I got planned, I got plans. I'll be at the Red Lobster in Upland in no time. <laughs> I'll be at the Red Lobster in Upland. <laughs> They're not known for their comedy. Ah. <laughs> it was a busy day. I saw The Land of the Lost. Not the movie. I made a wrong turn up in Irwindale. Oh. <laughs> I can hardly see you come in, man. <laughs> Did you get your appetizer? I thought I worked here. <laughs> a little embarrassed now, aren't you? <laughs> It's been a busy week. I made a killing in real estate. I shot a Jehovah's Witness on my front porch. <laughs> that is so wrong to laugh at. I went to the Jehovah's Witness Study Center. They had a sign on the door that said, no solicitors. <laughs> they have a tendency to show up at your home. <laughs> Hence the irony. <laughs> Hence means therefore. <laughs> And the only reason I use Jehovah's Witness Shucks, they're passive people, so what? They're gonna come after me? <laughs> Not invite me to the Halloween party? <laughs> they don't celebrate Halloween. <laughs> Busy, I was just in Atlanta, I got recognized at the airport. That's always kind of cool. It was a little awkward though, this guy went, Bob Zaney, I love you. And then he went, well, not that way. And it was really awkward because I had to put my pants back on. <laughs> Have you seen this at the airport? It's the massage chair. It's a chair. When you sit in it, it will talk to you. And then for a dollar, it'll massage you for three minutes. And then you can't make this up. It says, thank you for coming. <laughs> How did it know? <laughs> I said next to this lady, she had to be in the chair for like 45 minutes. Finally, the chair just said, can you come already? Because <laughs> you women take your time. <laughs> I've got shit to do. <laughs> the garage isn't going to clean itself. <laughs> I'm kidding, I go to sleep. But anyway, <laughs> it's it's about getting right. How's the dinner show coming along over there? Everything okay? It's important to eat and laugh. <laughs> he may choke. <laughs> I've traveled across this great land. I've performed in all 50 states. I was just in Houston, Texas. Anybody from Houston? Heard of it? <laughs> they got a place there called Finger Furniture. And the first time I heard Finger Furniture, I said, no, but I want to hump the end table. <laughs> I had sex with furniture. Because <laughs> it's everywhere. Just asking for it. If I knew the fucking way, I got enough. <laughs> it's not about comedy, is it, Bob? It's about selling those drinks, isn't it? <laughs> you could put a mannequin up there, you wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> Bob Fisher, the owner, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Beginning of my career, he was the first guy to give me a shot here at the Ice House back in 1982. 
and to this day I regret it. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. Are you by yourself? Get used to it. <laughs> I think I found you a friend. <laughs> It's two hours outside of Lexington. I actually had to drive there. It's so rural, 15 miles before I got there, the GPS in my car said, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> now I got the GPS with a celebrity voice. It's country superstar Mel Tillis. I keep missing my turn. <laughs> he stutters. <laughs> We're gonna turn it for <laughs> We missed him. We messed it. And I apologize if I fit in any stutterers. That was not the intent. So don't come up to me after the show to complain because I just don't have the time. Okay? I'm in therapy. That's your shit. I got my shit. Okay? Detached. I was so depressed the other day. I called my therapist and, and, and they said, and she said, treat each day like it was your last. So I stiffed her. <laughs> you like that one, man? Yeah. Really, you're not going to be paying bills on your last day, are you? That's what probate is for. Well, I'm in the middle of a divorce. Someone said, when did you know it was over? I said, when she defriended me on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, she hadn't poked me in years. <laughs> Is this girl that old? <laughs> yeah, it's been a rough year. Uh, I have lost a lot of dear friends. I have, I have been in so many funerals. Always a pallbearer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody mourns different. I'm going to be telling some jokes a little later on. I have to get this lecture out of the way. Mannequin Monthly called, you got the cover. You just happen to be there, sir, you know. You're the lucky winner. I know you wanted to win Powerball last night, but this is probably going to be it for your life. I find life is unfair. What is your name? Greg. Give Greg a big round of applause. <laughs> You're a good man, Greg. You never gave me that look. I got a gun out in the truck. <laughs> I've done those shows. Shreveport, Louisiana. Guy in the audience yelled, Are you a Yankee? <laughs> I never thought about it. I was born and raised right here in Los Angeles. So I said, Well, no, I guess I'm a Mexican. <laughs> De nada, poquito espanol. <laughs> Muchas gracias, mi amigos. Como se dice en espanol. <laughs> Greg, did I notice a little bit of an accent? <coughs> Where are you from? I'm from Sacramento. Oh, that's the accent. Oh, you live in here. How long, how long have you been out 
of Sacramento. Uh, since 82. Yeah, it's time to let go. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Frank? I'm a doctor. Oh, what kind of medical practice? For ear, nose, and well, ears. Just ears, not ears, nose, and toes? Oh, okay. That's real messy. <laughs> scarier I have this or I pulled it out. <laughs> it's a souvenir from the airport. <laughs> Did you just spin up? <laughs> Let's just say they found my nail clippers. <laughs> they were up my ass. <laughs> and one time, doctor, during band camp. <laughs> Your doctor, do they come up and say, We look here? Your doctor, do, they do it they do a lot. Could be worse, you could be a proctologist. <laughs> then they would bench over. How many people look at this gentleman right here and just want to hide your pot? <laughs> I'm actually using a new hair loss product. As you can see, it's working. Three more treatments and I'll be back. What's your name, sir? Mike. Mike, nice to meet you, man. What do you do for a living? I'm a retired teacher. Oh, you're a retired teacher? What did you teach? What was your subject? History and government. History and government, yeah. Well, government would be civics, correct? Yes. Okay. And then history, what was your favorite part of history to teach? What are you just passionate about? Make shit up, don't you? <laughs> I'm actually self-taught. I went to public school. <laughs> Rescue Vina High, class of 79. Well, very nice to meet you. Man. Do you miss teaching? No. No? <laughs> How about your invisible friend? How do they feel about it? It's not like a big rabbit or anything, is it? Um, well, so now that you're retired, you, what do you do? Do you have, are you giving back to the community? Are you doing charitable work? You know, you're sitting on your ass? What was that question for Mike? <laughs> Time to play Ask the Teacher. <laughs> Bob, we already gave away two lights. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Bob, why is it out there my photo's not anywhere to be seen? It used to be up there until you did the remodel. Out, there's two fucking photos of you <laughs> over there. <laughs> What's worst case scenario? I won't be back. <laughs> Gratification. Gratification. 
gratification? Ninth grade. Okay. And then if that doesn't pay off, can they go to self gratification? <laughs> <laughs> it's called whacking off, doctor. <laughs> know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you are so sweet. What is your name? Pauline. Very nice to meet you. You're very prim and proper, and some of this stuff you probably shouldn't be laughing at, right? <laughs> is that how you feel? That's okay, Pauline. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Pauline? I'm a technical. You're a technical writer? Well, that's why you're bored. <laughs> Listen up, Pauline. Show some movies. Come on, look at <laughs> See that film, Go Get Private Ryan? <laughs> I said, Dad, it's called Saving Private Ryan. But they fucking had to go get him first, didn't they? <laughs> the same five jokes my whole life, the same five jokes. And he goes, Bobby, I should write for you. I said, well, Dad, you should look up the word prolific. Well, had I used one, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> he's told me the same five jokes my whole life, the same five jokes. And then also, he's like a chip off the old block. My grandpa, I'll never forget my grandpa. I called him up to tell him I bought a house. I said, Grandpa, I'm a homeowner. It's okay, Bobby, we still love you. <laughs> Grandpa, a homeowner. We'd like to meet the young fella. <laughs> I said, Grandpa, do you think I'm saying homosexual? What, did you buy a house? <laughs> Is that where you and the young fella are gonna live? You little homeowner? I actually, my house is in Lake Balboa, California, which is Spanglish for Van Nuys. <laughs> what they do in the valley is they rope off areas with police crime tape and rename it. <laughs> it's good values. What is your name, sweetheart, right there? Francis. Francis? Nice to meet you, Francis. I love that name. And what do you do for a living? I'll get back to you. This shit's different. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Your producer of TV show, can you name it? It's called Courage New Hampshire. It's called what? Courage New Hampshire. Courage New Hampshire. So I'm thinking it takes place in New Hampshire? <laughs> Shit just clicks with me. <laughs> live free or die. The live free or die state. 
Rich Hall did a great joke about that. How about being that guy making those license plates in prison? <laughs> Very nice to meet you, Francis. Are, are you guys on the off season right now? Yeah. Where is it? What's what channel is it on? PBS. Oh, PBS. Oh, so it's snooty. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> I figured out why, as you get older, the ear hair keeps growing more and more. Do you know why? Because because your reflexes change as you get older. So when that fly starts fucking hitting there, it stops as you go. <laughs> it's a theory. <laughs> I have a new cologne today. It's called Come to Me. Does it smell like Come to You, Mike? with Chuck Harris. That was the first time I ever performed. And to be rewarded after my set, or during my set actually, a man dressed like a nun with a big net pulled me off the stage. <laughs> so you fuckers can't hurt me. <laughs> so what do you want to do, Paula? Now? Don't know? Got some time to think about it? Can you come sit with Mike? <laughs> Trailer Park canceled the dance. <laughs> Isn't that why we're all here tonight? <laughs> Is it propane tank now? <laughs> I think it was Frank.
information right now. What? Oh, digital media. What have you found out is a fun fact. <laughs> huh? Nothing. Do you have Pandora on your phone? No. Who has Pandora on their phone? <laughs> you can get a Bob Zaney station. Isn't that exciting? I have my own station on Pandora. And I only say it because it's self-serving. I get royalties. <laughs> Paula, last quarter, $7.13. <laughs> I'm talking about walking around money. <laughs> Talking about my shit don't stink money. <laughs> I was in Jackpot, Nevada. Has anyone heard of Jackpot, Nevada? Yeah. Did any of you leave the area? <laughs> I know you have because that's part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Bad body language, sir. When you sit like that, oh, yeah, I apologize. Well, you're good. being judgmental. <laughs> You got the coupon? Do <laughs> <laughs> you work with Francis on the uh, New Hampshire show? I'm married to her. Was that the question? <laughs> Say my name is because I had forgotten the initial question. <laughs> and Victor, what do you do for a living? Uh, I have uh, my own business. And you keep telling yourself that. <laughs> It's a little casino town on the edge of Idaho. It's three casinos, general store, post office, and a trailer park. So I'm walking through the casino. Older gentleman at the penny slot looked up and said, Hey, Bob Zaney, what's the joke of the day? I said, You're a winner? Because <laughs> I'm a people person. I love people. No, I truly believe without people, we wouldn't even be here. Last race, and that's for the horse to bet on? That is. Can, can you do it online now? Yes, you can. You can, so you don't even have to go to the track? No. I, my parents, when I was a kid growing up in West Virginia, they would take us, my sister and I out of the school to go to the racetrack. Because they were good parents. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, that's a true story. <laughs> From the heart, nothing. So if 
we're getting your checks now, what I'd like to do is open up the uh, forum for the questions from the audience. I've asked you a lot of questions. You should be able to ask me anything you want during the check paying process because it's a little disruptive. So <laughs> just go ahead and blurt it out because I can't see the light has changed here. It's really sucks. <laughs> Any questions? Go ahead. Yes. Yes, I do remember playing Montclair and also Claremont. They had two. <laughs> they had a last stop in Montclair and more in, Mont in Claremont. Did you know that? Which is next door to each other. So I was the first comedy show you ever went to, and now here being your last. <laughs> Can you say full circle? I think the Lion King talked about it. Next question. I was on the Gong Show in 1977. I kind of mentioned that earlier. <laughs> there is going to be a test on this show. <laughs> huh? You were on the appetizer. No. Did you think I was like the doorman or something? <laughs> no, be honest. Did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is your name? Carissa. What is it? Carissa. Carissa. What do you do for a living? Oh, you're a doctor also? Uh, ear doctor? Huh? <laughs> what do you do? Oh. Oh. First time in public? <laughs> it's not working out, is it? Lots of people, different smells. <laughs> Wait here, I'll get a broom. <laughs> Next time you think you don't have a drinking problem, <laughs> this is the worst shot glass ever. <laughs> can, we get a, can, hey, can, can we get a broom? And I'll, I'll sweep it up, Bob, because I know that you're short staffed tonight. <laughs> We're working on it. No, I'll, I'll do it right now. Jamie, here, I'll do that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I don't have anything going so weird. I saw you walking over and I thought you were so pretty. Now not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions hurt. Opinions hurt. I'm in Vegas. I'm walking on the strip. I see a penny face down. I'll pick it up. To me it's cash. Drunk homeless guy saw the whole thing. Hey, that's bad luck. I said, I guess you fucking know. <laughs>
Security, federal, state, local, unemployment, disability, 911, GM. Fuck, do you owe at the end of the week? <laughs> ask me, how did you lose the weight, Bob? How did you lose the weight? It was this book right here that's available after the show. It will change your life. If you want to lose weight or you have a friend who wants to lose weight or a family member, get this book. Because every page says, eat less and exercise more. <laughs> every fucking page. Eat less and exercise more. So, Mike, it's an easy read. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Paul, I want to keep that joke fresh. <laughs> I can't get any more of this till March. <laughs> I just can't win, baby. Live from Las Vegas is a great city. Hear a lot of jokes on her tonight. And by four, they make a lovely coaster set. <laughs> Eat salmon, the other pink meat. Look at that fish right there. Eat salmon, the other pink meat. Ladies, this makes a great night shirt and a great reminder to your partner. The perfect shirt for casual Friday down at the office. If you want it to be your last Friday. This shirt's changing the way America sleeps. Ladies and gentlemen, Wake me if you're horny. <laughs> and Mike, I guarantee you wear this to bed, you're getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> Let's do some quick news reports, okay? A lot of news stories going on. I had to write some of these down. New studies found pessimistic men are likely to die early. I just fucking knew it. <laughs> According to leading fertility experts, the worst time to become pregnant is the fall. The second worst, right before you enter the ninth grade. <laughs> Brought back a lot of memories for this group, huh? <laughs> Big line, uh, Woodland Hills, California. Six cars collide with a spill load of avocados. Luckily, chips were on the scene in minutes. What <laughs> the HPV shots do not lead to promiscuity. Jello shots are the way to go. <laughs> How's that time release comedy working out? Over there? <laughs> Dateline Mars, the rover Curiosity has found no signs of methane, but it did smell gas, but blamed it on the other rover. <laughs> entire pie all by themselves. And those numbers double when they survey an all-girls softball team. Pie is slang for vagina. I know it's not near the ears. You probably don't even know about it. Park, California, a man was arrested for biting the eyebrow off another man in a bar fight. Yeah, they didn't release the name of the victim, but they said you'd know him if you saw him. <laughs> <laughs> Actor
actor Michael Douglas, who said he got throat cancer from oral sex, has announced he's pulled off his latest film, Glad He Ate Her Too. That sounds like PBS material, doesn't it? <laughs> Remember the 33 trap miners in Chile? Not a world record for trap miners. Still held by the late Michael Jackson when he had a sleepover. <laughs> too soon, too soon. <laughs> Dayline, Providence, Rhode Island. Now there's a nursing home pet. You guys may have covered this story on PBS. There's a nursing home pet named Oscar the Cat. They did a book about him. This cat has this uncanny ability to predict the patient's death by curling up next to him before they pass away. And the staff says it allows the patient to die with comfort and dignity, unlike the other nursing home pet, Humps the dog. <laughs> I'm trying to die here, Humps. <laughs> Dateline, Bridgeport, Connecticut, a five-year-old brought 50 packets of heroin to school for show and tell. Did not get into trouble because he had enough for everybody. <laughs> Biopic of the Crocodile Hunter Steve Irwin is only going to be available on Blu-ray or Stingray. Oh. <laughs> hey, I have a theory. I think he mocked these crocodiles so long, the crocodiles hired the Stingray to take this fucker out. <laughs> Probably paid it in sand dollars. <laughs> Do you remember the movie 127 Hours? It was starring James Franco. It's about this climber in the middle of nowhere. He got his arm trapped in between a boulder, and he cut off his own arm to escape. Do you remember that story, Paula? Yeah, they asked the real life guy if he'd do it again. He said, yeah, but only one more time. <laughs> I'm so proud of all of you. That was a math joke, and you did it in your head. <laughs> She said when the stick turned blue. The bad news, a man in New York City was caught masturbating at a dollar store. The good news, the napkins are now marked down even lower. <laughs> Eyewitnesses say he got off cheap. <laughs> Ladies, I need you to back me up on this study if you agree. And men, listen carefully. This study may behoove you. Men who do housework get more sex than those who don't. There's a, cat, there's a caveat. They're also more likely to be rushed to the emergency room with their penis stuck in a vacuum. <laughs> I told that joke in Beaumont, Texas, and I yelled, it was a shot back. <laughs> I said, wet or dry. <laughs> How's the count on the dishes going along back there? <laughs> I bet you were doing this shit when Gallagher was here. 
I just want to show you how I'm raising the bar in comedy. I use the word behoof. That's not Francis. Behoof and caveat. Basically, it's a good joke. How much I care about this. I have some questions for you. Can an orphan eat at a family restaurant? <laughs> I marry two midges, is that big of me? <laughs> what does an atheist say during an orgasm? Oh, Darwin, oh, Darwin. <laughs> Told that joke in Kansas, I got nothing. <laughs> I think Amber's took off. Did Amber go? Where is she hiding? Does Lance Armstrong see the sack is half full? <laughs> Was the inventor of the crotchless panties thinking outside the box? <laughs> Do the doors on a sperm bank say pull and come again? <laughs> Did someone do these jokes already? <laughs> if a bisexual turns up missing, should they put their picture in their carton and half and half? <laughs> if the hand is quicker than the eye, how come I always get caught masturbating? <laughs> I do mean this, if I've offended anyone here tonight, how about that? <laughs> That's the bottom line in life. Do not get angry and upset what others say to you. You have no control over them. The true control you have is the way you react. A cop pulls you over and says, you just ran a red light. How about that? <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. <laughs> what you gonna do? Fashion, I saw a woman with sweatpants with the, you know, the wording across the butt. This one said, here comes trouble. And I believed her because she's eating a big bean burrito. <laughs> I thought at some point she might have to put on those juicy sweatpants. For juicy. 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 I saw a guy with a t-shirt that said, Dick's taxidermy. And I'm thinking he's going to stuff you one way or another. <laughs> High school, what grade? 9 through 12? 12. Just 12. Oh, wow. Woo, moving on up. <laughs> I saw a lady with a t-shirt that says, I have a vagina, deal with it. I went up there and said, hey, I got a penis, deal me in. <laughs> I'll call your bluff and I'll raise you, baby. Thank you all very much. Please support the podcast.